world where equality is just another euphemism for mediocrity, where participation is more highly valued than achievement, where just enough to get by is the new standard of excellence. There is a small minority of people who fight back against such apathy, who struggle daily to reach new heights. These brave few are the hope for the future, the bright shining light for the next generation. They are the ones who will lead us to the places we have never dreamed of, to the undiscovered country, to reach goals only a few can even begin to imagine. Unfortunately, none of those people could be here tonight, so kick back and relax. Prepare yourself for several hours of fun, friendship, fascinating conversation, and fabulous music. All those deaths have an alliteration and kind of a radio trick. Speaking of radio, you're listening to the most popular radio station in the history of broadcast radio, at least among stations that originate from Chris's living room. It's Curious Times. Your host is a curious listener. Here she is, Chris. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Curious Times. It's Sunday, May 28th. Are you kidding me? It's the end of May. It feels like it's been a long time since I've been on the air. We've had just a series of, uh, well, we had um, some just empty days that were planned to be empty because of five five weeks in the month or whatever. Uh, but then a couple, few cancellations, and it's like just, I can't even remember the last time I was on the air, really, to be honest with you. It feels like it's been... I know that we weren't here uh, Saturday, Aaliyah Dawn canceled Friday, of course Salva couldn't make it, but that was already a pre-scheduled absence. Um, Thursday, Jen Young wasn't feeling good, Amy Pratt wasn't feeling good, and I didn't even give Amy a chance to save the show. I just said, let's just call it then, because I still wasn't feeling all that great. Wednesday... And were we here Wednesday with Kathleen? Was that the day I had power problems? I think that was the day I had power problems. Yeah, right, power problems. I think Kathleen kind of did her own thing. Um, Tuesday, we didn't have a show. Monday, we didn't have a show. Did we have a show last Sunday? Last Sunday? No, I don't think we had a show last Sunday. Good Lord. So, Kimber. Kind of the last full show, I guess. Crazy, eh? Uh, so, anyway, th- thanks for being here. Um, we have um, Garima back. And uh, last time we had Garima, um, I found out when, as the show was starting, <laughs> that uh, Aaliyah Dawn had uh, arranged for her to replaced Aaliyah and um, so it was kind of a nice surprise that I didn't have to cancel the show that day Uh, and so anyway following that show uh, Garima wondered if there was a way to come uh, come on join the join the Curious Times crew and so we settled on the fourth Sunday not to be confused with the last Sunday uh, of the month. Is this the fourth Sunday? <laughs> One, two, three, four. Yes. One, two, three, four. It's just that, oh, that's why it was such a bad week because there was like five Mondays, five Tuesdays, five Wednesdays. Five Mondays, five Tuesdays, five Wednesdays. So, anyway, so um, we'll, we'll get to, we'll re- re- refresh all of our memories about and who she is, what she does, and all that kind of stuff, and um, uh, then we'll just come and have a bit of a discussion. If there's anybody that wants to call for a reading, get in queue, and uh, and, and following that, uh, failing that, and following that, we'll just go ahead and, and lock it down early, um, and we'll probably, like I said, make it... Um, you know, about an hour to an hour and a half show, and uh, and then we'll call it. Um, so she, Garima is a certified clairvoyant. She's a psychic medium. She's also an energy healer, and um, uh, 
what else should I say? I don't want to read it like verbatim, really. Uh, you can read about her bio on the show page. You can also read about Garima at her, face, at her website, which is www.spiritual-alignment.com. And uh, there's a phone number as well, which is 302-521-3488. And you can email Garima also at the email address garima0608. wonder if her birthday is June 8th. Um, anyway, Garima0608 at gmail.com. So let's just go get Garima and uh, find out uh, what's going on. How are you doing, Garima? Hey, Chris. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm okay. <laughs> well, well, just, so, it's well, such a pleasure to hear your lovely voice, and I wanted to compliment you. You look so fresh today, and now I know you took a nap, took a shower, had your coffee, so you're good to go. I just, yeah, I did all of that within the last, you know, 15 minutes. So anyway. <laughs> Look to you, superwoman. <laughs> we have a superwoman here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Super something, but anyway. Um, And so, hi, Dan. I see they're on the phone. You must be working. You're working too hard, Dan. What's going on with you, man? And working all these nights. Um, And I hope they're paying you... Um statutory holiday pay time and a half here you know what I mean Dan and so anyway Dan is our is one of our very few males who uh, listens and uh, so we're going to talk all about childbirth tonight Dan ha ha ha, ha <laughs> <our background. laughs> oh that's good perfect because you know I was wanting to discuss my cycle too so that'll work out good <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm off today, and I'm just coming back from metal detecting on the beach. Oh, metal detecting. What did you find? Anything interesting? Uh, not, not just a bunch of change. Um, last week, same beach. I did get old silver earring off the beach that I actually thought was a pendant. It was so large, I couldn't imagine mm. someone sticking this to their ear. I know. I can't. I don't understand. Like it's like they're carrying freaking five pounds on each ear or something like that. Like I don't get it. I could not do it myself. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then go <laughs> swimming. <laughs> they can do everything, and they got like you know they can like they're sometimes these hoops they're big enough they can like skip skip with them you know and stuff like that. They can do the hula hoop or something like that. Them, you know, I don't know, like, I don't get it myself. That would be, I have enough trouble in this lifetime with, like, little accidents. Like, I'm the kind of person that I would, like, be tearing through somewhere and my hoop earring would get stuck and uh, you caught on something and I would, like, totally, you know, lose an ear and do a face plant and everything else like that. So, anyway, Dan, it's nice to see you there. I guess you're en route and you'll be home and so then we'll see you log in if we're still here. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm gonna mute. Okay. All right, Dan. Okay. Do you have questions about, you know, uh, about childbirth? Let us know, okay, Dan. And um, so Dan's gone. So anyway, um, you guys uh, remember that Grima came to us through Alia Dawn. So, so just tell, re- refresh everybody's memory and and anybody that's brand new that wasn't here that night, Grima. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you came to become interested in things metaphysical and uh, and such. Yeah, uh, I would love to chat about it. Um, sometimes these coincidences happen and they leave um, a, nice, a, a beautiful story to talk about. Same thing happened last month when Aliyah Don posted in one of her groups on Facebook that she couldn't make it uh, to her radio show and she wanted to see if somebody can cover for her. So I raised my hand. Um, <laughs> I said, let, let me try this new thing. I've never been on radio before. And Chris was gracious enough to welcome me in. <laughs> I, I know it was like complete surprise for her, her at the last minute. But yeah, that was the that was a beautiful beginning, and you know, <laughs> we can all la- laugh about it now. But at that time, I was like, I was so nervous, and Chris was, had no idea what was going on. Who is she? I don't even know how to say her name right. <laughs> <But> <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, uh, yeah, I remember that was like, uh, 
I don't know. We had to get you figured out how to call in, and I don't know. It's like seems so long ago now, but that's good. You know, um, and what's interesting is that um, kudos to you because so often people are uh, like most people would never like I could see somebody of Aaliyah Don who knows me and or who had been on my show before uh, to go ahead and say yeah and say sure I'll go do it you know what I mean but. Uh, here's you, you didn't know me from nobody, and you'd never been on a radio show like that before, which we kind of laughingly call this a radio show, right? Um, it's kind of more like a, you know, a Skype call with friends, but anyhow, <laughs> anyway, we call it a radio show, uh, and, um, but, you know, you didn't know what you were getting yourself into, and so that takes, that takes, um, you know, some courage. And so, uh, you know, all credit to you for uh, jumping up and, and uh, going into an area that you were unfamiliar with as well. Yeah, thank you for, for that beautiful compliment. Um, there were two things that helped me. One is my hunch or, or my intuition about the energy of the show, which really helped me understand that this is a safe place to be. And the second thing was that I'm just so passionate about helping people bring alignment in their life uh, with their truth that this is, for me, this is another way of reaching to people. And um, the awesome listeners you have, they are um, all spiritually inclined. They're curious about their truth. They're curious about how to, they're curious about metaphysical. They're curious about how to live a happier life. So I feel like this is a community of folks who um, who understand that we all have the responsibility of bringing our life in alignment and be happier and be closer to the divine. And however you choose to divine, define divine, but if mm-hmm. all of us have that uh, in common. So this was a great platform to be a part of. And I thank you, Chris, for giving me that opportunity. No, not a problem at all. And so, like, off the top of my head, like, I used to have this really long, like, um, it was almost like a 20-question thing, but it was well over 100 questions, and it was just like a quick rapid-fire get-to-know-somebody that we didn't know. But let me try something first with you, and that will help, uh, that will help, uh, help me, um, help me, uh, and some of my listeners who know this one. But let's, let's just pretend for a minute that you... Um, can't be a uh, human anymore, and you have to choose to be what animal would you be? And so, what before you say, um, I want you to pick your top three choices of animal. Uh, so, first, you would rather be what kind of animal, then, second choice, and then third choice. And just a little short reason um, for each as to why. So, you know, you want to be a sloth because you know, or whatever. But but so like what would your first what would your first choice be? Yeah, what a fun question, huh? <laughs> Um, my first choice will be to be a squirrel. By the way, I've never thought about the answers before, so this is all rapid fire, real time responses. So uh, the reason, yeah, the reason why I chose squirrel is because she's not in the way of anybody. She she's just going down, hunting her food, coming back and prancing around, and 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 just you know going from here and there and just just being in the moment. So that's why I picked the squirrel. Good. And your second one? Um, for some reason, snake is coming up. Um, because I am scared of snakes. <laughs> so I, I want to be a snake to normalize that fear. Overcome okay. that fear. Um, and the third would be monkey, you know. Uh, monkey is a character, it's such a comical character and can mimic any, anybody, mock anybody. So I would like to be a monkey and make everybody laugh. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so um, the, you did that very well. Like lots of times people, they hem and they haw and they, uh, lots of times people can list off the, their first two animals and then they get stuck on the third. And it's really interesting. Um, and so the thing is, is that it doesn't really matter what, uh, what the animal is, uh, it more matters why. And, um, like the first thing is like the way that, uh, you perceive yourself. And so you perceive yourself as kind of just like needing to go about your business and all of this kind of stuff. 
but without getting in anybody's way to do that. You like to fly under the radar, but still get your stuff done and keep yourself busy and all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't, uh, you, uh, the way that others perceive you is, I guess, somebody that wants to overcome their fears. And, and look at that. I mean, you did that by just cold calling into a psychic radio show uh, to be the guest on almost very little notice and so and the third uh is the way that the person really is and so that you like to make people laugh you like to be the kind of like the you know um like to keep things light maybe maybe you would be the person if if uh if things got a little bit um if uh, the energy got a little bit thick or things got a little bit uncomfortable in a gathering, you might be the person that would be trying to break the ice and make people, uh, you know, um, feel more at ease and, and uh, get them laughing and things like that. So that's a, ni a neat little um, exercise for people to use with people they don't know. Uh, and in some ways it helps you to... Um, Without getting into, you know, um, a whole big long thing, it kind of gives you a real quick glance into the basic characteristics and, um, you know, things like this of somebody that you're just meeting. And, and so an example that I give is, um, and, and an example of why it doesn't matter what the animal is, it's more important why, um, is that... Um, Somebody might pick a snake. I had a guy, a, a boss of mine one time, he was like the director, he was like the, the dean, the dean of uh, continuing education. And um, he uh, he picked snake, and I was getting all ready for him to, he picked like King Cobra or something like that. And I was getting all ready for him to be all, because, you know, because everybody's scared of them and everything like this. And, um and uh he picked it because of its uh it's a family like it looks after its family you know what i mean so that gave me a whole different insight into this man um yeah. and i had people that two people could pick like a lion and one could be uh picking the lion because it's very majestic and graceful and you know that another one could pick it because it's like the, one of the top feared predators, you know, and those are two different people that you're meeting them, right? Yeah. And, yeah. Um, so uh, it's a neat little, uh, neat little exercise. Um, a neat little exercise yeah. to try when you're just meeting somebody new. So, so that's good. Um, so now, uh, sometimes we like to ask people uh, just about like all of these. Um, different things because uh just because somebody's a psychic medium and they believe in that kind of a thing doesn't mean that they believe in all of the all of the things um like um like other life forms out there i mean do you, do you, what's your thoughts on whether there's other life forms uh somewhere out there in the universe or the multiverse yeah, I am sure there is um I have uh, recently started astral projection but I am getting there. But this is something I'm very curious about, meeting beings from other universes, other life forms. So that's something I'm definitely keeping an eye on. And maybe I'll have an answer for you in, in a month or two. Yeah. Well, you 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 believe in it, and so now you're in the process of, of trying to um, – because there's a difference between believing something and knowing something. And so you're in the process of, of hoping to – know and confirm what your thoughts are on it and so that's good um how about uh how how about like have you i can't remember if we talked about this before but so clearly you must agree that there's um an ability to communicate with people after they cross over yes uh yes i am also a certified medium so um yeah i do that a lot <laughs> and so, so now when you do that um, have you ever like seen, um, how do you see them? Do you see them? Do you hear them? Is it in thought? Is it, how, how do you know that you're connecting with a dead person, uh, and all of that kind of thing? Have you ever seen a ghost 
quote unquote, I mean, a spirit of crossover? Uh, yeah, um, so when I connect with somebody who has crossed over, um, when they come close closer to me, I uh, feel sensations in my body, mainly toward, on my back area. Um, I feel this weird sensation, which are uh, hard to define in words, but at that moment, I, I know that I'm making that connection. Um, and then um, in addition to that, I also start seeing their pictures. The images keep popping up, and they show me different images. Uh, they show me images of them, how they look like before they even passed away or when they were a child. So every spirit is different, and they pick and choose what to show. Um, but they also show me um, whoever, like their relationship with the reading, uh, whoever I am reading, how they related to them, what are some of the memories they have together, uh, what are the, some of the experiences they had together. So, yeah, all those help me um, understand, um, you know, that I have this connection established. Right, right, right. Um, and so that's, uh, so now, do you, um, now, how, have, have you, have you ever, have you ever thought about, like, reincarnation and past lives and future lives and all of that kind of stuff? Yeah, all the time. Um, I read people's past life all the time and um, it's quite interesting Chris um, I, I basically um, kind of set my intention to for any past life to kind of light up where um, whatever the VD is going through um, they can kind of learn a lesson from so it's it's quite interesting like almost like a video comes up in my uh, vision and I see really doing something, and then I keep fast forwarding it, and then they show me the conclusion of how that past life concluded, and that kind of tells me um, what the really should do or, or should think about to overcome some of the obstacles they're going through in their present lifetime. Um, so that's that's what I do all the time. But it wasn't a big uh, paradigm shift for me uh, because I I was born into a Hindu family. And in Hinduism, they do believe in reincarnation. So it wasn't a big uh, perspective change for me, per se. Right, because it's in Hinduism that they believe in this, but in, I think, Buddhism does not, if I'm mis not mistaken. Is there, can someone correct me on that? I think uh, Buddhism, they don't believe in. Yeah, um, you're right. So, okay. Isn't that interesting, hey, how... how um and and now now it makes me wonder if because lots of times and i i get all wrapped up in this idea of um maybe hundreds or thousands of different um existences that each of us is undergoing now and uh that past and present and future are all the same but all on different dimensions and so um you know, whoever I might have been in in 1825, uh, that's that's going on now. Uh, you know what I mean? Like I might be some Chinese guy. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? In, in 1825, but that's happening now. And then I might be some, you know, future person. Uh, I I still am. I still am kind of pursuing you know, a, a hunch, uh, which is the best I could call it, that, you know, we could be, aliens could be us in the future. Like, I have no doubt that human beings, we need to and will um, find a way to live elsewhere. You know what I mean? Off, off the planet Earth. And so to the extent that, let's say, if you, you know, in the future, quote unquote future, uh, human beings find some other planet that's habitable and uh, and reachable um, or something similar to that, and then it's, you know, and the human body um, seems to evolve uh, a, and adapt to its environment, yes? And yes. So I could see that in the future under different gravity situations and uh, oh, all kind of host of different things, atmospheric conditions and all of those kind of things that our even physical appearance could easily change over time as a result of that. 
I mean, look at all of us human beings on, on, on Earth right now. And so that people who are, you know, uh, you know, different skin pigmentations and uh, it's because people are adapting to their own environment on this earth and uh, and that kind of thing as well. So I'm not convinced, you know, that like aliens, quote unquote, aren't just us in the future. You know, do we go on to leave earth and then, you know, and then from there, populate out other planets, and as a result of that, become very different from each other, different societies, just like we are on Earth. Look at how different we are on Earth, right? Um, uh, yeah. There's just so many, so many differences. So um, it's it just it's interesting to me, but uh, because it's all hinged on this thing of time, and does time really? Time travel, time, you know, is it all happening at once? Um, more than one timeline happening? And people have talked about there's a group that feels that there's even like two timelines for the human race right now, for us. Uh, I'm not talking about maybe if we're uh, having other lifetimes on other dimensions right now, but just for us. And that there's two two timelines working right now and so depending upon choices that get made you know one might be the end of end of earth and human beings and the other is a better outcome and i don't know about that myself you know what i mean but um but uh, i definitely agree with you that there is other life forms out there and uh and and so interesting to have you ever talked with anybody who has had any kind of uh, visitation uh, that they thought was like an uh, alien abduction or alien visitation or anything like that? Um, not really, but I'm I'm all ears. Um, I I believe that that could happen, but I haven't come across anybody who have experienced that directly. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, then let me just see. How about uh, what's your what's your feeling on? Um, and you don't have to know anything about it, but just do you have a feeling about whether, um, like, Bigfoot or Sasquatch exists? Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. See, do you have a feeling about whether Bigfoot or Sasquatch exists? Um, I am not sure, actually. Okay. It's not a topic I have thought of. Yeah. I have an, I have a feeling that it's an interdimensional uh, being myself, Sasquatch. I think that they can they can uh, appear and and disappear easily from our uh, from our Earth here, and uh, I think that's part of the reason why they're elusive as elusive as they are. I think that if they do exist, that they're um, more spiritually advanced, if that's a lack of a better way for me to put that, than we are, and mm. um, higher vibrating, and um, so that's kind of kind of what I think about that. Um, let's see, uh, what else is there? Um, have you ever heard of or looked at the question of? So many more people these days, and it kind of makes me roll my eyes a little bit, but because um, it's like a bandwagon almost that some people seem to be wanting to jump onto. But um, have you ever dealt with or come across the, uh, the topic of um, walk-ins? Um, walk not real. Not really. Okay. Um, so it said to be oh, that um, this is... I, yeah, yeah, in in astral projection I have. Um I I haven't experienced that myself though. Um no. but I, I definitely have heard about walk ins. Hmm. Uh, and I think that under some circumstances it is possible that that, that would happen. But like these days it seems like that so many people are claiming to be a walk in and it drives me a little bit crazy, but um, that's just me, you know what I mean? Um, it's almost like somebody's too many people just to 
just have to put a label on something and have them talk to you special in some way. You know what I mean? Like how so many people go, well, I'm a star seed. I'm all like, what's a star seed? You know what I mean? And I go like, if, let's let's take a little look at what what the situation is, because people seem to think that there's Earth and then there's outer space. You know what I mean, Garima? Yeah. And, like, I'm, and I'm saying uh, Earth is part of outer space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like we're a planet floating around out there in the dark too, and um. And so, to that end, we are star beings also. And, uh, you know, we're coming from, uh, like, I don't, like, people have, like, uh, they forget that, you know, we're part of that. We're just one little piece of the universe. And we're, you know, we're, we're, and so they're all like, oh, I'm a starseed from, I'm a Pleiadian. And I'm all like, oh, my God. <laughs> and uh, uh, no, you're an earthling. You really are an earthling. Um, but you know, last time we died, and we were our soul was was roaming around out there on the other uh, dimension where souls go after they have a physical life, and um, and that waiting to come for their next one. And you know, so we're all star beings in that sense, in my opinion, like we're, like they're all like, oh, I come from another planet, like, well, that, like we come from another planet too, it's called Earth. <laughs> I know. You know. Like we're a planet, like we're part of that solar system you guys are talking about, so, um, so I, I always get a kick out of that, you know what I mean, but um, have you, now, do you... Um, How's your view on uh, animal spirit, animal totems, and you know, uh, like, do you believe? First of all, let's take this in succession. So, number one, do you believe in such a thing as a spirit guide, a main spirit guide that is your, uh, you pick them before you even come into this life? Do you do you have yes. any thoughts on that? Yes, I believe in spirit guides. I work with spirit guides. I get messages from them. So yes. Okay. And so then, um, uh, how about a thing like that people talk about called a guardian angel? Um, yeah, I believe in them too. Um, there are guardian angels out there. There are angels out there. There are, there are all sorts of beings out there. Uh, some are extremely supportive to us others are not as much but yeah there are all kinds of beings out there okay um and uh, like i like i feel that a, that we pick our own um spirit guide and that the spirit guide that we pick for is you know some some soul that we know and we know as a good friend of ours soul friend of ours you know what i mean at the very least and so somebody that we trust with our life <laughs> you know what i mean like we really are trusting our soul our um our spirit guide with our life aren't we uh and so it seems to me that it's somebody that we have a great deal of trust in um uh you know that we that we choose before we incarnate and uh a, a guardian angel on the other hand i'm unsure of because um when you get talking into the area of angels um then some people talk about how angels are different because they're they've never incarnated as a human being so an angel is different in that way then you hear people talk about oh that their great 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 grandfather is their guardian angel and stuff like that and like i'm inclined to think that we should, we also have a guardian angel when we come into this life what what are your thoughts on that um, I, I tend to agree with you. Um, I, I agree with you that uh, spirit guides are um, the entities uh, or beings who we have worked in in our past lives. So um, this was um, some time ago when I was curious about my spirit guide. And what I did was I looked at, um, okay, what's my relationship? I was trying to track back my relationship with my spirit guide. 
Um, so I realized that I had shared at least two lifetimes with them. Uh, one mm-hmm. In one lifetime, uh, we were like best of friends, um, you know, two girlfriends, and we were like ha- attached to our hip, and we were just very close. Um, we had all sorts of fun, and we were laughing together. So that image popped up, which was so um, nice to see. Um, and in another lifetime, um, I saw her as uh, an old woman sitting under a tree, and I was passing by, and uh, she looked homeless. And I took her in. I said, come over to my home. Um, I offered her food, um, you know, something warm to drink. Um, and then looked like she was very old. She did not have anywhere to go. So she spent last few years of her life with me. So there's a strong attachment. Oh, and, and in, turn, in return of uh, me taking her in and providing shelter and food, she taught me a lot spiritually even in that lifetime. So there's a strong connection I was able to see with my spirit guide. With guardian angels, uh, from what I believe in, now everybody's belief is different on these topics, but um, I don't think they had a body before. They didn't incarnate as human beings. Right, right. And that's interesting. Yeah. Um, now, here's, like, this one kind of kind of um, confuses me a lot, which is that, um, so we know that we're a soul, and we're, so a soul is energy, and then the soul pursues, um, an, you know, uh, desire to experience things that it can only experience in a physical body. Yes. Um, yes, some of some of that. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, where was I going with that? Um, I already lost my train of thought. Um, oh, come on, Chris. It was going to be really good, too, you know what I mean? I should have wrote that down. Dang. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, I can continue um, on, on that path. It may not be exactly what you had planned, but uh, I was taking this conversation back to what you were suggesting before, how all of us are human beings, but how we look is completely different. Where we choose to take birth is completely different. The life we live is completely different. So um, a lot of that depends on the type of energies we want to release in this lifetime. So it's no coincidence. I, I read for people and I see all these little baby spirits around them, um, hovering around them, and they want to be born as their children. And uh, it's it's no coincidence because the reason why they're so interested in these people is because of the lessons they're learning in this lifetime. So um, a lot of times babies are born and we see uh, we say that, oh, she looks like her mom or he looks like his dad. And that's the reason being the lessons they're learning is similar to one of the parents it look like. Right, um, the right. body they get in this lifetime or in any lifetime, um, it depends on the type of energies they want to release. They could be, um, you know, a person with a little bit more on the heavier weight side, uh, with bigger bones, denser bones. Yep. And the lessons they are learning is how to, um, you know, feel good in their body, how to embrace their bodies, how to own their body and kind of let go of the standards that others have set on us that um, only a size zero is beautiful, you know? Yeah. Or, well, or there could be a... Well, I mean, because if we think about it, a body is a vehicle. And so now let's think about vehicles, right? Some people are little little sports car people, and they want to be, like, lean and aerodynamic and sleek and um, flashy. And then others are, like, big old farm truck people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. They, don't, yeah. they don't care about what it looks like. They just care that it's a, it's a solid uh, vehicle that's going to get the job done that it was intended to do. Uh, but I did not remember my question, and so... Um, so now I understand that um, I'm a soul uh, in a, having a human experience, and so my soul um, made some kind of a soul contract to come, and I picked parents, and as a result, uh, I came into a physical body. Um, now, um, so then this means that, well, so then I have to go back to creation, and I don't mean just Earth. 
creation, you know, because the whole freaking universe and multiverse and everything verse had to come, had to be created somehow, you know. And so now, here's the part that blows my mind, okay? Because um, we're recycling our souls in, in a sense, right? So like if I've had more than one life. And some people think that you could have had thousands of lifetimes and other people think you have way fewer lifetimes than that. And who knows, maybe it's a mixture of both. Um, And I don't believe that, okay, you keep coming back because you did it wrong and you have to. Like, I believe that we choose whether we're coming back or not. We're the ones that decide. Um, But, you know, there are some, there's a lot of different views on that. But here's the, the crux of it. If all of us human beings, um, and all life forms, all life forms come from a soul. Um, If you go back to uh, prehistoric days, let's say, and there were just a a very small population of of humans, right? Um, Now there's uh, like, what, 7.2 billion people? Uh, And so... My question is, where the hell do all these souls come from? Like, was every soul that exists right now created at the same time that the universe was created? In which case, have a lot of those souls just been, like, waiting and waiting and waiting because there has to be several, you know, there wasn't an... There wasn't that many people on the earth before, and so now the the population continues to grow and grow and grow. So where do all these new souls come from? Uh, like, or have there all along been, you know, fifteen billion or one hundred billion souls? And at, at any one, like, in other words, is the soul population bigger than the human population at any given time? And like, what, where, what's your idea on that? Are, are Were all souls ever to be created at the same time? And so they're just waiting their turn? Or or do new souls come? Because one thing we've been told is energy never dies. So my soul theoretically will never end. And so, like, what? I don't know. That one kind of blows my mind. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, um, one thing I have learned uh, so far in my uh, spiritual journey is that a lot of what we see, we try to use our human mind <laughs> to understand. The lo- we, we use our logic to understand a lot of things that happen in the universe. And um, and to be honest, not everything could be comprehended by our human mind. So yeah. my, t- my take on this, when I do readings for my clients, I look at their soul age, and not all of them had thousands of lives. Some of them are newer on this planet, and some of them are um, more mature, and they have been around um, for a while. And that's important to know because it tells kind of uh, the mindset of a person. So, for example, a newer soul tend to be more like they have this childlike curiosity about learning about everything, relationships, uh, you know, how life works uh, on this planet Earth. Um, so, so they are curious and, and they want to know a lot of, uh, a lot of what happens. The medium type soul um, are more like they understand how things work and they, are, they become more like activists. They start to form stronger opinions about things. And a lot of uh, people you see who, are, who get uh, triggered by political events or they, they're very opinionated about certain things in the world, they are more like medium soul. And then there are older souls who have been around for so long that they understand how things work. Um, you know, they are more patient with things. They're more... Um, um, they, they're more understanding with things, and they they know like things will pass, so they don't react as much as uh, some of the uh, younger and medium soul uh, does. A lot of younger souls are like actors, comedians, you know, performers. Um, so yeah, it's it's really interesting to see that. But I, I think it's it's not um, it's it's hard to kind of say you know where whether all the spirits or souls came into existence at the same time because a lot of them a lot of us are you know not 
uh, not uh, older souls. A lot of us are um, younger souls too. And the mix of all keeps the whole universe balanced and interesting, to oh, be honest. That's, you know, and I, we can all the soul, oh. if we're in, if we're aging souls based on how many lifetimes, that's different than how long that soul has been in existence. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, we're the, saying, yeah. Yeah. So, so we could have. I was. Uh, we could have, you know, two people, one of which we would characterize as an old soul, which might mean that they've had many more lifetimes than the, than the other person. Um, but those two souls could have been created at the same time. And we would call one a young soul and one an old soul. Um, right. My thing is this, is that because we're energy, um, and I have to believe a little bit on the scientific side of things, which is that, um, there was something that happened that was absolutely so mathematically precise uh, as to create things like DNA, which is very complex and specific. And if one little DNA strand was different, you know, we would not be who we, you know, human beings kind of thing and, and all that kind of thing. It's all like so masterfully to be an accident is impossible to me in my thinking. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm thinking that at that same time of all creation had to come in at kind of, which means like that I don't think that there's a soul birthing center somewhere out there where, you know, someone decides when it's time to make uh, new souls. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. Uh, you're right about that. But at the same time, there's a lot more that we don't understand, like the parallel life. You know, the same soul can live two different lives at, at the same time. So there's a lot of that going on as well. Well, and, and why limit it to two? It's like I was talking about earlier. Maybe every one of our lifetimes is happening at the same time. Right. There's no such right. thing as time. You know what I mean? Exactly. And that kind of thing. So Anyway, yeah, there's, um, there's no there, such thing as time. So there, so now, so that wasn't so bad. Do you know what I mean? And I see that there's at least three people that want to get a reading. And so, since we're going to wrap it up in about a half an hour from now, um, we should probably transition over into the calls if you're ready to go with that. Yeah, I would love to. Okay. And so, do you ask of people to have a specific question, or what? What is it that you want from the people? Yeah, a question would be great. Okay. All right. Now, I don't know who this anonymous person is. I'm going to go to that person first because they were the first one on. So who's this one? Uh, who's that? Hello? You just heard a little beep in your ear. Okay. And now you heard another one, and you're about to hear a third one. Who's this? Okay. I don't know who that is, and so they're, they lose. Uh, okay, so we'll go to Corinne then. Hi, Corinne. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, how's it going? By the way, um, everybody, Mary, I want to just quickly say Mary Margaret, like, I, I just, like, go like this to Mary Margaret. She sent me a private message on Facebook, right? And I, <laughs> my intuition, I just knew she was sending me a picture of her freaking knee. And so here's me. This is no doubt, no word of a lie. I'm like going like this, like I'm expecting, I have my eye, little crack there, and my eye ready to slam shut if my suspicion is true. And oh my effing God, are you kidding me? What did they do to her? Yeah. And did, did she send you a picture? Yes. <laughs> So I told her, I go, you cannot do that to me, Mary Margaret. And I go, like, I can't. And that's the old <laughs> like, When I see things like that, like, I have an explosion of, like, pins that, like, jab me from the inside out. And I can't handle it. I go, now I can't even think about it. And now I cannot unsee that. <laughs> you know, like. What the fuck? They didn't have to cut her from the hip to the ankle, for Christ's sakes, to put a new knee in. But that's almost what they did. And so I was like, oh, my God, Mary Margaret. But so she's, uh, um, you know, 
everybody could send their good energy, their prayers, you know, for a speedy recovery for her. And I'm just like traumatized. And I, I, I mean, I told her, I go, it's okay. Like you're the one that it happened to, you know, but that was just like, um, remember Chef Pete, he had knee surgery and like, I was there scrolling down Facebook and boom, uh, there's, there's his, you know, I'm like, oh, I can't see stuff like that. But anyway, okay, enough about that. Our thoughts are with Mary Margaret and uh, her speedy recovery. So do you have a question then for Garima? Um, well, you know, first of all, can I ask you, why are we ending at 1130? Or why are you ending at 1130? Well, we're ending when we run out of calls because we're done then. Okay, so because I don't want Garima to rush my reading just because we're ending at 11:30. You know what I mean? Yeah, we well, almost didn't even go with the show today, just so you know. And so uh, I told Garima, "Don't worry, we'll make it a, sh- a shorter show." And and um, and uh, so there's plenty of time. There's three people and a half an hour. No, you know what I mean? There's plenty of time. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Garima. Can I ask you, what does your name mean? Does your name mean anything? Yeah, um, it's a Hindi name, um, and it means dignity. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you, well, I, I won't interview you now, but I was going to ask you a bunch of questions about living in India, but I'll save that for another time. Um, so, anyway, anyway. So, you Garima, can ask me questions now, too. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> I just <laughs> wondered because India is such a mysterious, seemingly mysterious place. Right, Karima? Like, yes, it is. And um, so I wondered how much that had to do with your, you know, de- delving into mediumship. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I, actually, I didn't catch your name. It's Kareen. Kareen, okay. Yeah, it's interesting, Kareen. Uh, living in India, when, when we think about India, you know, coming from outside in, um, it's a different ball game. But when we are actually in India, the culture there is just very different. Um, so while growing up, I did my engineering in India, and there was just a lot of pressure growing up to be something because it's not a very rich country. So um, everybody wants to study hard, get good grades, and, you know, uh, to be an engineer or doctor. <laughs> so I went through the same grind growing up. Um, um, as part of the – I was fairly religious growing up, and as part of that, um, um, I had – I performed a lot of rituals, uh, went through the whole religious training uh, and whatnot, but not as much on the spiritual side of things, not as much as connecting with spirits or talking to spirits, because that 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 pretty much is prohibited. It's like okay, uh, not not um, normal people do that, even within India. But then if you dive deeper into yoga and uh, how yogis lived their life, um, you know, many, many, many years ago, um, uh, that was more possible at that time. But just growing up in a, you know, a middle-class home, a middle-class household within India, it was a different experience. Yeah, no, I bet it was. Now, Garima, are you familiar with Ama? With Om? Ama? Uh, what is that? Ama is this woman from India that she's called the hugging saint. And all she does is she goes on tour and all she does is give people hundreds and hundreds of people hugs. And wow, they, that's awesome. Yeah, it is. You should look her up because she is awesome. Um, and of course we know about Mother Teresa. So, I mean, you know, your country, I mean, it is, you know, and I, I realize that it, there's a lot of poverty there. And, um, but there's, there's so many cool things about India that, that are mysterious. And, you know, so I just wondered how that kind of played into your, you know, looking to be a medium and whatnot. And yeah, so, yeah that's really cool. So anyways, yeah, yeah, check out, check out Ama when you get a chance. And, um, yeah. 
Yeah, that's why that's what I was saying, Kareen. Growing up in India was a different experience uh, because of all that cultural conditioning, society conditioning I went through. But like living in the U.S. for about for over 12 years now, I have a very different perspective, and now I'm able to see the richness that India has to offer because I have been on the yogic path, the meditation path, the mindfulness path. Now when I look at India and all that it has to offer, it's just so deeply enriching that I wasn't able to tap into before. Right. Interesting. Um, So not to get personal, Garima, but a lot of, um, like I know a few gals that were born in India that live here now, and a lot of times the men – sort of, you know, I should say their fathers or other men have kind of suppressed their spirit, so to speak. Did you find that to be true? Yeah, Corinne, um, my take is that um, a lot of times we um, incarnate into these um, countries or cultures or or uh, geographies, um, you know, where um, we're working on different energies. So a woman who's who was born in US has different lessons to work go through, different energies to work through and women in India has different. Um even in India, what my husband family is working on energetically at the soul level is very different than what I um or, or my um my mother and my grandmother uh, they worked on so yes you're right there is this uh, oppression energy there's this suppression energy where women don't believe in their own light um they can't shine bright um if they do they they kind of feel threatened and others feel threatened and they oppress them so there's definitely that energy that people are working through uh, especially in that part of the culture and Mm. just like that you know there's no right or wrong or there's no better place on earth than the other Um, we're just working on different type of energies here right 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 well I know I have a good friend Sheila from India and she actually doesn't talk to her well she talks to her dad but her dad has you know, he's been very hard on her, very, very hard on her. And uh, so anyways, that's another story. But anyways, I just wondered, you know, but that's excellent that you said that, Garima, about us working on different things, uh, you know, born in different places. We're working on different lessons and whatnot. Um, that's really cool. So, um, okay, so and number three, do you know how to make chicken tikka masala? <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 you're talking to a gal who is strictly vegetarian here, so sorry to di- disappoint you, my friend. <laughs> oh, okay. Because I, I love Indian food, Garima. I love Indian food. Well, if you lived in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, I would have invited you over for some vegetarian Indian food. But I don't know where you're located. Um I'm in Massachusetts, far away. <laughs> far, far away. <laughs> but well, that's if you, if you ever come to this side of the country, do give me a shout. <laughs> I definitely will. Believe me, <laughs> Amy. <laughs> Amy saying in Amy saying in the chat, but we travel. When can we come over? <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm going to say anytime, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there's nothing better than connecting with like-minded people. So I am all up for that connection. Um, you know, so anytime if you guys are, uh, you know, in this part of the country, definitely give me a shout. If you are, if you like Indian food, even better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like rip up some of the recipes. Oh my God, I bet they are so good, Garima. Oh my God. Um, okay, so you know, I. Coincidentally, I'm also taking Aaliyah's mediumship class right now. And wow. yeah, so I wondered if you had any, you know, not, not to give away secrets or anything like that, but, um, you know, I mean, how was it for you to take that class? Like, what did that mean to you? Yeah, so um, just um, a quick thing. Um, I did not take her full class. Um, I did a very quick private session with her, which was over three classes. Um, I have been working with Boulder Psychic Institute for the last two years. I'm taking their graduate studies. 
um, their graduate level, level program, which is the Avatar program. Um, so at that time, when I uh, reached out to Aliyah, which was late last year, um, I was trained psychic, and I've been doing readings for a number of years. Um, and um, I was seeing spirits, but I just needed some sort of practice and some sort of framework in talking to spirits and whatnot. So we did a uh, one-on-one -on -one session. I think she did three sessions with me and then uh, one final practice one before the certification. Um, so that was my experience. I didn't go through full class to provide you uh, that perspective. But one thing that was helpful, and it's still helpful, is just the practice. Um, the more I practice, the more uh, comfortable and confident I become, and the more I know how the spirit communicates because the communication with spirit is very cryptic. Uh, it, it's different than the psychic reading. So for me to just understand that difference and, it, and knowing that, okay, the messages I'm receiving are not from uh, the reading's higher self. They're coming from a deceased loved one. So just, just differentiating that within my own communication, my own interaction with spirit was uh, the key. So just practice helps a lot. There are a lot of online groups you can practice to. Um, you, can, you can practice with live audience and whatnot uh, or doing a radio show like this could be helpful. So to me, that was the most important component. Mm -hmm. Right. That's good to know. I, I mean, I practice wherever I can, believe me. I mean, I'll pull strangers off the street and practice. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm so happy to hear that because a lot of psychics, even myself, I went through a phase of pulling myself out of the closet. Um, there were, like, so many different reasons why I wasn't comfortable being out there, but I'm so happy that you just take that pride and, and own yourself and even not afraid to approach strangers. I really love that. Thank you for <laughs> that. It's, it's inspiring. Oh, thanks. Um, so I had, because I have a radio shoot, show shoe a radio show to garima and i had a gentleman on last thursday this past thursday and he told me speaking of spirit guides he told me i had a spirit guide that was a gypsy and she was you know this guy didn't really know anything about me garima but he described what i would describe myself like you know sort of very creative writing wise and you know artistic and she loved music and really kind of like a free spirited gal you know so do you get any sense like is you know uh, of who my spirit guide might be or besides yes. her maybe or okay yeah um could you say your full name for me it's kareen de winter okay Thank you. Mm -hmm. So give me a second here. I got to get the Jeopardy musical. <laughs> um, so I am seeing a woman appearing, um, and she has short hair, a um, little bit heavier build, um, and I'm seeing her wearing like a pink skirt and a top, and the skirt is uh, longer, um, it's pretty long. Um, she's definitely on the heavier side, uh, but, but very graceful, um, short hair. Um, and she is showing me a lifetime where um, you two used to study together. I am seeing both of you sitting under a tree, um, and, and you are, like, facing your, – your back are facing each other, and, and you're looking away from each other, but you are um, studying together. And it looks like you were, like, one of the best friends uh, in your classes. Um, definitely see this in a college setting. Um, and let me see, let me see what else is coming up. It, it's like one of those relationships, like you were just best friends forever. And um, in that phase of life, in that lifetime, you took a lot of pride in like uh, kind of beating the kick, uh, you know, beating the 
part of the, of the examination, and you studied together, and you just celebrated together every time an exam ended. Um, so that's what I am seeing, and I feel like you trusted her a lot uh, in that lifetime. Um, you really opened up with her, and, and looks like this was your world. Um, you didn't have too many other friends, and even um, your parents, your family around you uh, didn't look like you had this uh, relationship where you could open up emotionally or be emotionally intimate with people around you. So it felt like this was like your source of joy in that lifetime, your um, your world basically. Everything everything revolved around around examination, um, you know, studying, and even this friendship. So I'm, I'm seeing that, that strong comfort level that you two shared in that lifetime. Um, let me see if there's anything else popping up there. Okay. Um, I am also seeing in that lifetime um, that you lost your eyes um, due to an accident, and I'm seeing this uh, girl, uh, your, your friend, helping you out in that lifetime. Um, I'm seeing she's helping you cross the road, um, and she's helping, she's holding your hand and taking you to the other side of the road. And she kind of became like a, like a guide in that physical sense. Uh, and I feel like that's why um, this relationship um, is, is so much, there, there's so much trust in that relationship. You really trusted your life with her, um, and you really listened to her. And even uh, when, at the time when you didn't see properly or you had this uh, uh, physical impairment, uh, you were able to rely on her completely. And I feel like that was the foundation of this new relationship in which uh, she's your spirit guide. Okay, do we know when that happened, Gurima? Yeah, let me see. Um, I am seeing about eight, nine lifetimes ago. Mm. Um, let me see what else is coming up. Um, looks like England, uh, England is popping up. Uh, that area is popping up. Okay, so you think she still might, or still is one of my spirit guides? Yes. Okay. And, <clears throat> Garima, do you see anything to do with me right now in this lifetime from my future? Sorry, I didn't get the question. Okay, I don't get it either, but... Uh... <laughs> 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 do, you, do you see anything popping up for me in this lifetime, for my future in this lifetime? Yeah, um, let me see what's coming up. Thank you. Okay, so your your spirit is showing me um, riding a, a speedboat, and I'm seeing you're in a lake or something, in, in a water body, and you're doing some really cool stunts, and you're telling everybody, look at me, look at me, look, look what the new things I'm learning. So um, I feel like... Uh, just spiritually, there's a lot that you're learning right now, and you are just so eager for everybody to see, um, and, and you're eager to share it with everybody. There's this sense of excitement. There's this sense of uh, achievement that you're experiencing and you're enjoying right now. So that's what's coming up. Um, let me see what else is coming up. Um, do you have a dog? A dog? Yeah. No. No, I don't. I, I mean, not right now, I do not. Okay. Um, there's this um, um, golden colored dog is coming up, um, and I'm seeing you sitting next to this dog. Um, you have glasses on, and you're doing some paperwork, um, filing some paperwork. Uh, so let me see what this, this really means. Okay. 
means Corrine's going to be in charge of the Rainbow Bridge. Uh, she's going to be the one uh, logging in all of the, uh, the pets as they cross over. <laughs> Gatekeeper for the Rainbow Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> um, wh- what you're showing me here with this image is, um, um, it looks like uh, there's there's some seriousness. There's some goal you have set. Uh, whether this is in regards to something you're studying or your job, uh, but there's some curriculum you're you're trying to get through. Um. I'm seeing a lot of seriousness and a lot of determination in there. You almost have your game face on, but at the same time, the environment you, you're sitting in feels very relaxing to me. And especially this dog is coming up. There's something about company of this dog. It's almost like a partner to you. Um, it, it's almost like um, telling you that you're never alone. I am there with you. Um, I'm not sure if this is a living dog or some, some a dog that used to be with you in the past. Uh, but there's some calmness about wh- what I'm seeing right now. Um, even though you have a lot going on and you're very determined to go uh, someplace or, or achieve some goal, um, there's very, very calmness. The, the energy is very calm and it's, it's a uh, very relaxing energy. It feels like you're doing a lot of work, but at the same time, mentally, um, it doesn't feel a, a whole lot of work just because how comfortable you look in this image. Okay. Well, it is indeed true that I'm going through something very heavy for my, <clears throat> for my work. And, um, I, I would, I would love to know that I'm going to come out the other side and, and still be able to do what I'm doing. Uh, let me see what comes up there. Uh, I feel like you will be able to come out of it, um, but the question, the guidance that's coming up from the spirit is, could this be more joyful and heart-centered experience than what it is right now? It looks a little rough on on you right now, and probably that's why I'm seeing uh, the significance of the environment you're sitting in this image. Um, the environment is helping you to like stay calm and um, comfortable, but at the same time, um, my question would be, um, is there any way you could be more joyful and, and heart-centered and bring your heart in the world? Um, because right now, the energy that I'm looking at is very uh, rigid and very um, goal-oriented, and, and there's almost a game face on I'm seeing uh, in this image. So my, that would be my question. Is there any way we can make this more joyful for you? So that yeah. you're happier and more fulfilled and more content, you know? Right. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's <laughs> – with, what, <laughs> with what's going on, I don't know what the hell could make me more happy in the moment. You know what I mean? <laughs> here's, my, here's, my, here's my take on that, okay, is that there's something that you're
but you have some control over the the consequences of the of of, of how it affects you. Um, right. You know what I mean? It, the the courts and everyone else will decide how it affects your pocketbook. You know. So I think that what Garim was saying is like if you could try to shift out of that hostile environment that it's throwing you into in that one section of your life and just be the other be the purple plate <laughs> be love and good energy be a purple plate Corinne. Be yeah a purple plate. right be a purple plate. that's you know there you go that's i'm tired now <laughs> <laughs> well um, yeah that's excellent what she just said but go ahead garima yeah i was gonna say Corinne. um there this whole um, goal that you have set work-wise uh, from your career perspective, I feel like it can come with a lot more ease than you're allowing yourself to. Um, I feel like um, there's just some, some rigid energy, uh, and this is not your energy, by the way. This is some other energy from your workplace, which is like, no, you have to do this right now in this way. Um, it's not allowing you to to fully present, to be, to fully show up um, at your job and, and the project that you're working on. Um, I feel like um, this is getting harder than it should be for you. Um, and uh, one thing that's coming up is, uh, the guidance that's coming up is um, re recognizing that you, you have the seniority over the job and you have the seniority over anybody in your world. Um, and you call the shots in terms of how what kind of experience you want this to be. And whether this, you can still do the same work that you're doing right now, but maybe turning the music will help. Um, you know, maybe that just creates this lightness uh, in the environment that helps you relax more and be more present and enjoy this experience more than um, how it is right now. Right. The other thing, the other thing that's coming up, uh, and, and probably this is what the dog is trying to tell me, I feel like you're, your spirit is longing for a partnership. Um, it could be a romantic relationship or any kind of relationship where somebody, uh, I'm actually seeing a man, uh, somebody would like come over and give you a, a, a mug of coffee and say, hey, sweetheart, you have been working for too long. Here's some coffee. This will help you go a little bit longer. So I feel that longing is coming up, and I feel like that's the relevance of the dog I was seeing, which is reminding you you're not always alone, even though you think you are going through this uh, rough experience by yourself, you're not alone, and I'm by your side. And I, I, I tend to think this is some soul. I don't know if you ever had a dog, but there's some spirit coming in and, and trying to remind you of that. Well, you know, there was a dog just here visiting me. Um, but I, I had a dog when I was very little, Garima, and he, the dog got taken away from me. And I always think about that dog, you know. Um, what color was that dog? It was like sandy blondish, like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a dog I'm seeing, yes. Mm hmm. Yeah. Snowball. His name was Snowball. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, while the connection still exists, even though the dog was uh, taken away from you, nobody can take away that spirit from you. So that connection is definitely there. Right. So, yeah, so just chill out and relax and, and know that, you know, I mean, separate myself from the issues that I'm going through. Separate exactly. my – Yeah, okay. Yeah. That separation will help you a lot. That will help you define, okay, this is me. This is what I want. This is how my experience should be based on who I am. And this is a job, a project that I have to do. Now let me think of creative ways on how I can make this project more fun for me. I have to go through this shit anyways. So let me just laugh a little. Let me just dance a little. Let me just turn on the music a little bit more and just enjoy. I mean, we'll go through it. Of course you'll go through it. Of course you will succeed at this project. But the question is, you know, how easily, uh, with, with how much ease, with how much grace, with how much fun you're able to go through it. Right, right, indeed. You're absolutely correct. And I will work on that. I will definitely work on that. Awesome. That sounds awesome. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Garima. Thank you for also letting me ask you a bunch of questions.
Oh, I loved your questions, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> you know, um, I, I also learned a lot from you. Never be afraid to approach strangers and do psychic readings or mediumship readings for them, right? Totally. <laughs> you know, I'm, if they, right, you have nothing to lose. If they say they don't want it, then you don't do it. But, you know, a lot of times if you're getting a feeling, go with it. It doesn't matter who the hell it is. You know what I mean? Just. I mean, I talk to everybody all the time, but anyways, you have to have that, that, um, um, you know, that pride about you, Garima, because you're on the right track and you know what you're doing. So go ahead and share it with the world. Thank you. Thank you for that encouragement and good luck to you as well as you learn these awesome leadership skills. Yes, I hope I do well, but yes, thank you so much and thank you, Chris. All right, Corinne, thank welcome. you. Um, can you just go ahead and mute yourself? And Christy, can you unmute yourself, please? Um, oh, wait, that's it. Uh, yeah, you're there, Christy. You gotta unmute oh, yourself. And hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Grima. <laughs> Hello. I'm yeah, here. Hi. How are you? Good. Um, and just to make sure I caught your name right, Christy, is that right? Christy. That is correct. Yes. That's me. Awesome. Well, nice to meet you, Christy. How are you doing tonight? I have had a pretty good day. The weather's been nice here in Michigan, so that always helps my mood, so I'm happy about that. Wonderful, wonderful. I have, you a, have a question. question. Yes, I yeah. was wondering if um, I've been in a bit of a a rut and I would love to be able to pursue something um, that is a hobby to make some money on the side. And I am having a difficult time getting started with that. I was wondering if you could see something that I, they, I might be able to do on my end to help push me over that initial hump. Okay. Um, and could you say your name, full name for me, please? Yes. Christy Joellen Faust. Um, is there a hobby you're considering, or do you want me to look into what comes up? I enjoy cooking things, and I enjoy sewing things. Is that what you meant? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I meant. So give me a second here. Let me tune in. Um, so, Christy, your, your uh, energy looks really conducive to uh, sewing more than cooking. Um, I see you cooking for, like, friends and family and whatnot, but when it comes to actually making side income, sewing comes up more strongly. Um, and I'm seeing you um, really forgetting everything, all the shitty things happening in life and really um, really focusing on sewing and creating something beautiful. And that gives you so much thrill, so much joy um, that nothing else uh, matches that. So I'm definitely seeing you opening more like an Etsy shop or something where you could sell things uh, that others are able to buy from you. Um, now, in terms of next steps that you can uh, take, I'm seeing something totally unrelated, but I'm going to say it anyway, uh, because I'm seeing you running and I'm seeing you um, running more in the woods, um, more, more in a forest setting where there's a trail and you're able to connect a lot with nature. You're able to ground yourself. And, and it's not something psychically you have to do, energetically you have to do, um, but just being in nature, it kind of cleanses you. Uh, it allows you to just release all the energy that you're holding on to, which is heavy in nature. It's not helping you breathe properly. It's not helping you feel good about yourself. Releasing all that in nature um, and, and exercising and getting those hormones 
started uh, within your body um, that makes you feel good, um, I, I feel like just that frame of mind, that mindset is going to help you stay more focused towards um, this hobby of yours. Does that make sense? Yes, that actually makes perfect sense. I do feel more grounded if I allow myself to spend a little more time um, in the woods, outside, um, even in the grass. And I haven't taken the time to do that in a long time. And yeah. that that makes sense for me to help restore myself energetically. That might that might help me get over this this hump. So yeah, exactly. Thank you for that. Um, I don't know. Do you run? Uh, I'm not sure why I'm seeing the running piece. Um, that probably wouldn't fit into into me. Um, I was thinking maybe that was. Um, Maybe it was maybe meant in a different way other than literally, maybe figuratively. Yeah. Um, I am seeing you running. I'm seeing you wearing these uh, shorts and, and you're running. And I feel like running is um, it, it's it's not a big deal in a way, but if you look at it, um, it helps people to stay um, focused on, on a goal basically. Um, it, it trains people, okay, uh, keep moving, keep moving, take one step after another step, another step, and keep taking steps after steps. And all you have to do uh, in that moment is to just focus on one step at a time, right? And I feel like in the situation where you are in, where you feel stuck, that running will be a great activity to pursue. And if you're not run a runner, don't worry about it. Uh, even walking will help. But the idea is to Keep moving, just training yourself to keep moving and not give up and keep moving. Um, I feel like that, that's the relevance of it. Um, the image I'm also seeing, um, you running and taking breaks. Uh, I'm seeing you sitting next to a waterfall, which feels a very peaceful image right now. So I feel like all of this could be very healing for you. That sounds perfect right now. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Christy, one one of my favorite things to do is visualization. Even if you, um, you know, before sleeping at night, maybe you know, uh, you can try visualizing where you're in, in, in a forest and um, you're you're in woods and you're just inhaling the beautiful um, air, this this um, misty air, you know, of the woods, of the red brown, the trees flowers you can try to inhale that smell you can visualize uh, you know sitting next to a waterfall you can visualize um, hearing those sounds I don't know if you're a good visual you, you enjoy visualizing or not but that's something I do and that relaxes me a lot that that is um, something I I can do but um, not that far from my home we have a place called Dow Gardens that um, I have a membership to already, you know, a season pass, whatever you want to call it, and mm -hmm. they have all those things that you have described. I just um, haven't taken the time to to go there this this, this spring or this summer, um, and I I do enjoy going there, and I don't know why I haven't um, taken that time. And they do have all those things you described. They do have a little waterfall, and they do have the lake, and they do have the the trails that you can go through. And um, I will put that on my to-do list this week. Awesome. I, I love hearing that. Um, and I also want to tell you, Christy, one thing that's coming up. Um, the word temporary is coming up. And, and the guidance here is that whatever you're going through, I feel like you're going through um, uh, some – some sense of security, the first chakra type lesson where you're learning about uh, releasing energy related to survival and that sense of security. And I just want to tell you that all of this release you're going through, this is a lot of work. This is, this is exhausting you, but it's also temporary. This is going to pass soon. So, you know, keep doing what you're doing and, and one step at a time um, and, and you'll get there. I like the word temporary. That's a nice word to use. Thank you. <laughs> you are welcome. You're very welcome. Oh, well, it's nice talking with you. You too. Have a good night. You too. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Wait, let's go get Amy then. Hi, Amy. How are you? Mm, hold on. I have you on speaker. Hi. Hi. 
This is great. Um, this is great. This has been a very enjoyable show. So, yeah, I just want um, a reading just like that. At Who's my spirit guide and um, whatever else. Um, just whatever you pick up. My name's Amy. Okay. Um, so your question is you want to um, get to know your spirit guide. Is that right? Yeah, that'll be perfect. Okay. So, And what's your full name, Amy? My name's Amy Louise Cavanaugh. Okay. You're, you're showing up as a beautiful white color today, Amy. I love that color. And it's not the color of unconsciousness. It's not. It's the color of uh, um, deep spiritual knowledge and truth. So I love that. And thank you for showing up today. Let me look into your spirit guide. Uh, Amy, um, the spirit guide that's coming forward right now, I am seeing um, him um, as a as a bald man. Um, he has uh, some uh-huh. hair on the side, but bald overall. Um, he is uh, medium build. I'm seeing him a checked shirt um, and a pant. Um, you know, um, I am that shirt is half sleeves. A um, little bit hairy hands and whatnot, um, and he is wearing glasses. And when I am seeing um, how you two are related, a past life is coming up, Amy, where I'm seeing you as a little girl, um, and you have your hands wrapped around him. And um, um, looks like he is a father figure, but uh, he's a little bit older in age, um, um, so he probably had kids late uh, in that lifetime. Um, so that image is coming up, and I feel like it um, doesn't look like you had your mom in that lifetime. It, it was only him and you. Um, so I'm seeing that connection where I'm, I'm seeing this image popping up right now where as a child um, you, you look pretty scared, and, and he is, like, consoling you, and he is um, telling you it's okay. It was just a bad dream. It's going to be okay. Everything is going to be all right. So there's this sense of comfort uh um, I am seeing, um, I feel like you just trust him a lot from that lifetime. Hmm. Interesting. I have a question about spirit guides. Um, because, you know, if this was a person from a past life, but can we be a spirit, uh, you know, because we're multidimensional, um, can we be a spirit guide? Like, you know, can we be a spirit guide and can we have um, a life going on on Earth? At the same time, at the same time, you know what I'm trying to say. You know, or, or um, I'm not articulating it properly. You know, no, um, you are. You are doing a fabulous job in articulating it. So my belief is yes, but I don't have a way to prove it to you. I haven't read. Yeah, either do life. I. Other than the yeah, fact <laughs> just, just trying to move farther. You know, I just sort of like you know grab onto these ideas not grab onto them, hold on to ideas and kind of like play around with them for a while um, until they become um, not sustain, you know, not sustain, you know, almost until something proves like, oh, no, that, that, um, that couldn't be that way. Because um, what you were, what you were speaking about um, brings very, at first, I, you know, at first I thought we were talking about my father, you know, my dead father. Um, well, first when he said it was a boy, I figured it was my dead husband. Then when he said he was bald, I thought it was my dead father. But then the more you talked about it, because I had this very, Kareen um, met my grandson last night. He Skyped with her. And my grandson and I had a past life together. And he talks about, he, but now he doesn't want to talk about it anymore because he's getting older. He's almost eight. So, um He's like, oh, yeah, that was just a joke. But um, when he was like five, four, I guess it started probably about five, maybe four and five, he used to talk about, remember when we used to live in the stick house and I was older than you? And um, 
our relationship now, um, he's seven and a half, almost eight now. And our, it's just, it's just it's a really, really odd, um, good, but odd, but odd relationship. He, um, he used to call me Grandma Mermaid, but then he decided, um, and he told Kareen and um, Christy last night that um, I was not a mermaid because, the re- and the way he found out I was not a mermaid was because um, I keep my feet, because I do, you know, um, in a storage unit and no, um, so it's just kind of this like snarky relation. Not just, anyway, it's just, it's a very old relate. you know, it's like, it's a relationship that has, um, that has, you know, lasted thousands or millions of, um, there's so much comfortability around it that, you know, we can um, offend each other and um, and just speak um, total truth. So when you were saying that, I was thinking, well, maybe that, um, you know, maybe um, the energy that you were pulling forth, um, it just sounds, it, the nature of the relationship and it just being us and no other woman around and stuff like that um, just sort of rang familiar to um, these stories that my grandson used to tell me that now he says were just a joke because he doesn't want, you know, because he just wants to believe in the here and, you know, you get to the point where you just buy into the um, here and now and it's just a lot easier. So anyway, that's fascinating. That's very, very fascinating. Um, lots to think about. So, does he have any um, message for? It? Does he have um, any suggestions yeah. as to how I could be doing my um, Earth walk um, more graciously? Uh, <laughs> you mean your model walk? <laughs> yeah, the mar- right, exactly. Yeah, that's it. I don't know. If that is so funny that you said that because I think that. I mean, it's like I cannot stand victimology. But um, I will be a martyr, and um, this woman that I used to um, be in a group with said, um, what's really the difference? It's just really just an um, egomaniacal, ego, it's a victim with an egomaniac, <laughs> an egomaniac, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. Maniac. Egomaniac yeah. victim. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, so yeah anyway, let me see. Yeah, let me see what messages are coming up. This this man is showing me an image of you lighting candles for some reason. And the message I feel like behind that image is um, really shining your light. And, and what he's telling me is that um, your your light, um, I feel like what he's saying is that there are layers right now that, doesn't, that don't allow you to really be out there and, and shine your light. And, I, and he says that it could be a lot better. Um, I don't yeah, know. He's yeah, just referring. It. He's referring to some grief that you're holding on to, Amy. Um, looks like what he's saying is that that grief has uh, just taken over um, your heart so much that it's really hard for you to be yourself. Well, I've had um, I've had so many losses. It started with, um, I had breast cancer, so I lost my breast, and then I lost my husband, and then I lost my brother, then I lost this person, this person, this, you know, this, there's been so many losses, and what I'm really grieving, is, this is like, I don't know how you can, I grieve the fact that my mother's still alive, because <laughs> my, rest of my family left me with my, um, with my mother, who's, um, we have a, we also have an interesting relationship, but it's really clear that, um, why we're the last two standing because, um, you know, because we just, you know, we just get thrown, you know, we just get thrown down here um, on assignment. But, yes, I have heavy, heavy grief, heavy, heavy grief. That It's not like grief like, oh, you know, um, yeah, it's something. Um, it's not like grieving like, oh, I wish they were back or um it's just the um 
really the physical toll that, you know, I lost all my money. I lost my breasts. I lost all my money. I lost my houses, my husband, my everything, you know, just the, the action, the emotional and physical toll that loss has um, taken on me. Um, sort of, um, it depletes my energy. I get exactly what you're saying. It depletes my energy. So uh, while um brought me great gifts and a lot of wisdom and a lot of opportunity to help and um, and really understand my purpose and everything, um, very, um, yeah, and, and that's yeah, what this that's man it. is. That's it, and that needs to, and, and some of it is I'm too focused on, um, on, I get, I get exactly. I mean, I get, I get exact, I get exactly what you're saying. It is, um, there is like this just grief, like my, um, it's kind of like my life. Um, not that my life is over, but yeah, kind of like it's over. Like I decide, well, I'm not going to date anymore. I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm not. Um, it's like I'm just slide. It's not like I'm ready to go. It's just like I'm just sliding into home. You know, it's pretty much like I'm done. And I'm just sliding into home. Um, and yeah. that's very, very interesting But because I'm not – it's also very clear to me that I'm not going anytime soon because I'm here on this assignment, what you're talking about, about the candles. So that's um, – this is very – this has been very, very um, – this has been very, very helpful. This has been amazingly yeah. helpful. I'm so glad that um, I just had a show tonight. This is fabulous. So good. So we'll yeah. see you soon in San Francisco for our um, – Vegetarian <laughs> Indian food. Yeah, um, I would love to cook for you. But let me finish what I was saying. And, and the oh, beauty of, of this this mini read, uh, uh, Amy, is that I didn't use too many words, and the message was so clear to you. Do you see how, how beautiful this is, this moment is, how powerful it, it is that this man who you can see only exists in spirit world, he gave me just a few words, just one image to talk about, and you knew exactly what it means in its entirety. How powerful is that? Yeah, because we know, we know. We know it's like we know, we we know we come with this no you know we come with this knowingness and then um and but then there's when we have these opportunities that you know we just always doubt our, don't always doubt ourselves and then you know when we have these yeah. opportunities to um, hear it especially from some you know especially from someone I could just tell from you know like I like I said earlier you were answering all the questions right and um, and I listened to this show Chris will tell you it was a very critical ear. Um, and um, I was like, yeah, she got she got all stuff right. So you know, when <laughs> um, it comes from you know a, when I can tell it's coming from um, you know from source and not just from you know the back of a you know yeah. magic eight ball or something like that. It's like oh, it's just really affir- it's just really affirming and it's actually really energizing because I've been getting physically sick a lot. What? Yeah, I, I've been getting physically sick a lot to. Um, yeah, um, Amy, the, the grief, um, it, it feels like a big rock on your heart, to be honest. And, and that oh, yeah, grief that it you're, it's like I carry it around. It's just like yeah, I just carry you're dra- it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's being dragged around, and um, and the energy it's creating with it, your beautiful aura. I mean, I'm seeing this beautiful white light, and all, all these spots are coming up because of all the grief uh, that's been going on, not just from this lifetime, but many, many lifetimes. So that's what's coming up. Oh, and the yeah. Mass, and, mm-hmm. and, the, and, and your it's spirit interesting guys because is, I just joined this, um, you know, Cheryl Sandberg, who, you know, the Facebook lady, she wrote this book, and I went to go see her, and then I – um speak and it was all there because like I work at hospice I mean it's like I immerse myself in grief I'm a hospice volunteer and then um I got um all recharged with um I'm in this grief group and I listen to these people's um painful stories and um I have just made grief is my hobby grief is my hobby it's very interesting that you um that you hooked in on that because yes, my hobby, and grief is my hobby. So. Yeah, and um, Amy, what this what this man is saying to me is uh, there's a reason why you're alive right now. 
and, and you are not gone as uh, your other friends and relatives. And, and the reason oh, yeah, you're that you're that. I get yeah. that. And I, cause I even had like a when I had cancer, I didn't know at the time because I was I hadn't really studied a lot of this stuff. But I mean, my life started flashing. Before I realized now that I was having like a life, it was like I was having a near-death experience. It was just like a near-death spiritual experience from spiritual trauma or emotional trauma as opposed to like physical, you know, some physical thing like my heart stopping to beat. I had the chance to check out with the cancer. Then when my husband died, the craziest thing, he was scared to die, and I ended up leaving my body. And um, like I was like, I'll die for you because some because you've got to go. And I had this, like, odd encounter. I guess I ended up in the Catholic part of heaven trying to, because he was Catholic, trying to get him over to the other side. And I saw, um, so, yeah, so um, so I get this exactly what you're talking I know for a fact that um, I'm supposed to be here. Um, and... Which is really good news, you know, which is really good news because no matter how bad things get, you know, it's just like, nope, you have to be here. I mean, and that's kind of what I know from doing some past life regressions and stuff um, and from living this life, you know, that the only thing I have to um, do in this lifetime is not commit suicide. And, you know, whether it's like, you know, a bottle of pills or suicide, you know, like a long drawn out um suicide by not um by not taking care of myself um and that's really good to know that's really good to know because it's like it's just not an op you know it's just not an option it's like yeah that would be um that's all well and good and um but it's just become it's just become so clear so i have enormous amount of resilience but sometimes that resilience um it's like really, it's really interesting that you picked up on um, the heaviness of because it, it is. It's very heavy. I'm tired, weary, um, not especially um, enamored by it. You know, not much excites me. Um, it's it's just been fascinating and perfect, perfect yeah. timing. Yeah, and the man is um, saying that, Amy, I love you, and he is. Um, he, he is um, showering these 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 uh, flowers on you, and and kind of it's symbolic. It's he's saying that I know how hard life is, but we're gonna get through this together. Yeah, yeah. It's like it isn't even. It's like it's just so hard. It's like, but I kind of get the idea now. Like it's supposed to be hard, but but then that's where the martyr thing comes. You know, there's like light and dark qualities to all of these kind of archetypes, you know, and there's a lot of resilience that comes with the martyr, but then there's also that, like, okay, I'll take on the weight of the world, and I, you know, I'll sacrifice and not have any fun, and, um, uh, yeah, it's very, very um, interesting that I'm leaning too much into um, yeah, the darker side or the whatever, the, the you know, the the slow, lower energy side of martyrdom Instead of like, um, I've got to, you know, being a bright light, like you can do it, you know. Yeah. Um, just keep uh, moving. And you can do it. I, and it's fascinating that you picked up on that because that's why um, lately I've been so sick. I'm just sick and tired. I'm like sick and tired, you know. And um, the yeah. only way I can um, rest is get, phys is get physically sick. So uh, this has really been fascinating yeah. fascinating because it's really annoying to everybody around like I, you know everyone's like yeah we know you know we know we know you know it's but it's like annoying it's like it's just annoying you know to, yeah um, oh yeah here she is the martyr girl she you know like and I've been moving I had to move my mom you know and I like move I even like I'm such a martyr I have to carry heavy stuff around like this one day I was moving a mattress by myself and someone said, do you want help? And I was like, no, I got it. And I was like practically about to collapse. And I'm like, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, no, I don't need any help. I don't need any help. Like even when people yeah. ask me if I need help, I never, I would never ask for help because it's like what, you know, weaklings do. But then even when people say, 
can I help you? And I'm yeah. like, no, I got it. And it's like, no, you don't at all. Yeah. You know? So that's, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, life doesn't have to be too uh, that hard. But one image that this man is showing uh, me, Amy, as you were talking, was uh, you sitting almost on a stage and um, almost like a spiritual guru type. And I'm seeing all these people uh, around you, and and they're just so oh, that is um, that's Corrine's that's Corrine's um, conference that she's having. Corrine, did you hear that? She sees me on a stage. That's Corrine's conference. Oh really? I have no it's idea. It's been coming but... up all week. It's been coming up all. It's been coming up all week. Just in these random. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's Kareem's conference. Wow. So uh, what this man is telling me is that you can show um, others how to overcome their grief by being an example to them. So that's what's coming up. <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, I get that. I mean, I get, yeah, yeah, I get that. So that's awesome. It's in October. Hopefully you can come and be a speaker. Awesome. This has been such a great treat. This is such a great treat. I've really enjoyed this. Oh, it's going to be by Corrine's house. It's going to be by Corrine's house in Massachusetts. Right by, right beside her house. <laughs> I'm just yeah, it is right beside her house, actually. It is right beside her house. It's a Unitarian church. Do you need anybody to cook Indian food? Yeah. <laughs> you need you know, as, a of fact, of fact. You, as a matter of fact. <laughs> this is so perfect, Corrine. It's moving along. Oh my gosh. I love when things happen like this. I love I love when it works like this. Yes, because Indian food is so um it's it's perfect. It's perfect for the um you know, cuz I hate when I go to these spiritual events. And then they bring in like chick fil you know, fast food for the um yeah. you know, or there's like chocolate cake for just it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> it's like um, that's so funny. Perfect. Well we'll tell we'll we'll tell we'll tell you more, um we'll tell you more about this has just happened over like the past like couple couple of nights, but it's really okay. um moving further and further into being a real thing and it's gonna be in October. But it's so oh, wow. great to meet you. Thank you so much. Yeah, so Amy. We'll tell, uh, we'll get thank you, you for thank you for sharing your light with me today. I really enjoyed our conversation. Oh, you too. You too. Um, and I get are, Chris. Are there more? Re, are there more people in the queue? Not that I'm aware of. Oh, okay. Because I wanted to talk to you know because you were talking there, about. Uh, wait, wait. Actually, there was Jackie. Uh, let, let me look and see if Jackie's still there. Well, you look while I quickly tell this one little story. You know, when you were talking about the um, the Indian thing, and this was something that happened as a function of, you know, I um, went to the Kentucky Derby with my friends and some of my friends' friends, and two of the friends were a couple, and they're um, Indian. I think that the why, and she's a doctor. Um, but... She was also having infertility problems. And I guess when she was at the Derby, we didn't quite understand because, you know, we're all there and it's all like everyone's all dressed up and it's so beautiful and stuff like that. She got overwhelmed with um, grief because she had just miscarried again. And Mm. so this somehow came out. And I didn't know what was going on at, um, at the Derby. But the next morning, somehow or other, I said something at breakfast about my experience. And she, like, pours out this whole story to me. And where I raised my children, there were GE Research and Development. There was a lot of um, engineers, so there was a lot of, you know, so I was very familiar with, um, you know, the the Indian mindset, you know. And Mm. I said to her, I think that, you know, first thing you need to understand is that, like, sadness, everything I need to hear myself, that sadness and joy can can co can coexist. They can happen at the same. You can yeah. be sad, and um, you can be happy that you're at the Kentucky Derby and everything's so pretty, and be sad both at the both at the same time. It's not like you're disrespecting your grief by experiencing joy. And yeah. I was like, I think a lot of this isn't grief from losing the baby, but it's because of your, um, you know, your mindset and your, you know, your achievement oriented. Um, you know, up whatever that um, 
that a lot of this is just, a lot of it isn't grief. It's just um, a loss of self-worth because you feel like you failed, you know, you feel like you failed, you know. It's like, it's like, it's not like, the, um, you know, it's like getting like a um, 300 on your SATs or something like that. And she was like, oh, my God, exactly. Mm-hmm. It was like, so I totally get, I wanted to share that because you were mentioning that um, about your um, childhood and, um and your dad and all that kind of stuff, and that that was an example of me, you know, that, um, so I know exactly what you're talking about, about yes. the helping the other people, but, so anyway, the end, but I think there's another caller, but anyway, <laughs> great to meet you, I look forward to talking to you again. Yeah, take care, and good luck with everything, keep me posted on that conference. Oh, we will, for sure, we will, for sure, Kareem will be, um, especially now that you're going to cook Indian food. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is wonderful okay. because it's really, yeah. it is meant, it is, this conference is meant to be. So anyway, so good. So um, I, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Great. Very good. <coughs> so Jackie, if you're still there, Jackie, Jackie, do you want to press one? Jackie, Jackie, Jackie. There. Hi, Jackie. Hi. How are you? Thank you for your patience. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I was psychic again. See, without even trying. I was like, this is <laughs> so funny. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like, out there. I'm like, so it's, oh, it's right next door to Corina. Yeah, actually it is. <laughs> Anyway, how's Jackie? What's going on? Pretty pretty good. How are you guys? Good. Just so we know, we are keeping Grima over the regular time here. So um, we'll be right to a question. And and uh, is that okay, Grima? Or do you have to, are you okay with that? Yeah, that's totally fine. Okay. Um, I was just wondering, like, what's coming up for me? What do you see? And now I'm hungry for Indian food. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jackie, could you say your full name for me, please? Uh, Jacqueline Rhine. Um, Is that your full name? Your last yeah. name? Yeah. So let me see. So, Jackie, um, I am getting an image of an orange, um, and looks like there's just a lot going on, and, and a lot of things, like multitasking is, is like looking in full gear right now. Um, I feel like that you're just working a lot on a lot of different things, a lot of different ideas. Um, I am seeing you uh, specifically working on... Um, your uh, second chakra, which is related to your emotional, your, your emotions, um, you're, you're uh, wetting out what it really means to be a woman and try to embrace that more and more each day um, and, and really um, kind of owning your emotions more. So that's what's coming up. Do you have any specific question for me to dive into? Um, just like work, career. Yeah, um, I am seeing you um, at your sitting um, at, uh, you know, at the desk, and I'm seeing you staring at the clock, and you're wondering, like, why clock is not moving faster. Uh, so I feel like I'm getting a, <laughs> I am getting a sense that uh, you're a little bit bored, actually, um, and uh, you're looking for that time. My God, like, then it will be five o'clock, and I can just head out and go back home. So I'm, I'm getting that feeling of boredom uh, from this current job you're in. Um, well, I'm just I'm I'm doing an internship, and I'm not getting paid, and um, it's kind of far from where I live. So I I enjoy what I do. I just you know I don't enjoy not getting paid for it. <laughs> Yeah, looks like you're just uh, doing like a countdown or something. Like, when will this be over? Um, yeah, so in about ten or twelve weeks or so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. 
So, um, so are you looking for new jobs, or what's going on with the full time job? Well, I want to. I'm finishing up school. I have one more class to take, um, plus a comprehensive exam, and um, I want to get a job close to where I live. But I want like a great environment, a great supervisor, you know, because this is a second career for me, and I don't want to travel an hour each way. Yeah. Um... I am seeing your um, some sort of foreign energy. Um, there's some foreign energy in your fourth chakra uh, around your having this space, and um, this energy is definitely not yours. And but it makes you believe like um, I have this huge list of things um, that I want in my dream job, but I don't think that dream job exists. So there's this this belief going on. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, really believing that, yeah, all the things that I want that are on my list, I'm, I'm truly deserving of. And mm-hmm. the job that I want, that I want to manifest already exists. Um, now I, I am co-creating. I'm, I'm defining what that job is. And with the belief, with a strong belief that that job exists and all I have to do is just co-create, just focus on things that I want instead of thinking about, all the reasons that the job doesn't exist or will be so hard to get. Um, and, you know, what we put out in the universe is what we get eventually. So um, I feel like um, just just working through this energy of doubt uh, as it comes up, um, whenever that, that doubt comes up, that little voice in your head that says, oh, I don't know if there are enough companies closer to where I live, or I don't know if this will pay me well enough. All these doubts that come up, just tell them that the job that I want, my dream job exists, and it's within mm-hmm. my reach, and it's going to come to me at the right time. Mm-hmm. So so that the doubt is, is gone, and it doesn't create hindrance in your way of uh, really manifesting it. Does that make sense? It does, totally. Yes. And cuz I feel like I I'm, I'm not doubting but I was telling my friend the other day about what I want and she was like she was kind of like I don't know putting doubt in me but but like I'm a big believer in manifestation so um Yeah, so so uh, when these doubts come up, whether it's internal or external from people around you, you just have to remind yourself that um, my manifesting space was perfectly clear, and it's blessed by the divine, and I am going to get exactly what I am looking for. Awesome. Yeah. So, so just believe in your ability to master, to be a master manifester, um, to really attract all the experiences you want in your life that makes you happy, um, and, and and think what makes you happy, what what creates joy for you. You know, money can pay the rent, and and you know is it, definitely a helpful tool in this world, but it's not everything, right? So. Um, just being clear on what you want, I think, will be will be helpful. And I feel like you have a lot of clarity, but just this doubt creeps in at times that um, makes you wonder what will happen. Mm-hmm. But but I see you you being very clear about um, things that you're wanting in your life. Awesome. Okay. Great. Well, thank you so much. You are very welcome. All right. You guys have a good night. You too. Have a good week. Take it easy. All right. Thanks, All right. Bye-bye. So, okay. There you go. Tell people how they can get a hold of you, Karima. Um, I, uh, you can visit www.spiritual-alignment.com um, or you can search for Spiritual Alignment page on Facebook. Um, my email address, my phone number, all is in my bio on um, the Curious Time website. So Chris has kindly put it up. So thank you, Chris. So yeah, no all problem. the all the avenues of getting hold of me are definitely listed. Awesome. Well, I guess so. You'll be back next time, uh, the next uh, fourth week. Uh, let me find out exactly what day that is in June. Uh, the twenty fifth, June twenty fifth. You'll be back. That's right. Okay. 
Well, thanks very much for your time, and I uh, look forward to the next time, Garima. Yes, Chris, pleasure talking to you tonight, and um, uh, good luck to you, and hope to see you again soon. Have a All good right. night. Good night, Take everybody. Care. Thank Bye. you. All right. Um, I didn't play even one song tonight. So let me. Well, I did before the show started, but let me play one. I don't know if you guys are hanging out or what you're doing, so I'll just uh, toss a song on quick and we'll see what happens. Um, let me find something. These dreams. I'm going to play. <laughs> Here you go. Uh, for Dan. <laughs> Alright, let me find my music. Ah, okay. What's going on, you guys? Are you coming on or no? Hey, I'm here. That <clears throat> is uh, Inland Sky. Inland, I N L A N D, Sky. Oh, I never heard of them. Beautiful. It's a, a beautiful little song. I love that. And now it has like Inland Sky. I N L A N D. Okay. Interesting. Give, give the apostrophe. Typo! Typo! <laughs> so, Chris, how do you feel, Chris? I'm tired. I can't believe that I, uh, I also, I also slept through my alarm last night, even though, like, I didn't, I wanted to have a nap, but I didn't want to sleep, like, all evening, and then, you know what I mean? <clears throat> I just want to, and, like, somehow missed two alarms and today too like it's I don't understand I have to check this phone because I can't believe that I didn't I'm glad I woke up in time to do the show that would have been oh my god that one would have been on me you know what I mean and it, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so um <clears throat> I was thinking too like that funny that my legs and feet swelling up like that, like, happened right all at the same time that Mary Margaret was going in for her surgery and stuff, but, like, this is a thing that I, I have, but, um, like, it hasn't flared up like this on me in forever, in such a long time, and, uh, like, my ankle, my left ankle is usually a little bit swollen, but I'm an old woman, you know, um, Shut up! You're not old, because if you're old, I'm old. I don't want to be old. But for it to, let me see, for it to, you know, get that puffed, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, here, this, this should be flat. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, you know, that's not right. <laughs> and, uh, my foot is, you know, my toes usually... There's no puffy here. <laughs> you know right, I mean? right, right, right. Like, that's like, totally outrageous. That's outrageous. It's, <laughs> it's so hot, Dan. See, this one's not as bad. This one's not as bad. Um, mm -hmm. But, like, it's still pretty bad. You know what I mean? And, um, <clears throat> so it's, it's crazy that... This one's crazy. crazy yeah. Crazy. Pretty crazy. I'm so, do you have the lemon? Do you have, let me just ask you, do you have the lemon juice and cayenne pepper? Yeah, I do. I, I mean, I know, you know, you have to also be a little bit careful with that because, like, that's serious blood thinning, eh? And, mm. um, let, let me just put it to you this way. If I would have been on the on the cayenne pepper and the, the ginger and stuff like that, and then cut my hand. Remember when I cut my finger? Yeah. I might have bled. I might have bled to death. Oh you know shit. What I mean? Yeah. And um, so it's a it's just little slippery slope. I've been trying to you know be. That's the whole thing. It's like I know once I go lay down on the couch, like when this thing does flare up and I go. Um, the idea is keep your feet elevated above your heart, you know what I mean? And, um, and, and so I know that I'm at risk if I lay down on the couch, I'm at risk of sleeping. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, so, um, 
I've been trying to do that. I've been trying to see if I can't just let it settle down on its own without. I don't know if there has been a food that, that aggravated it or why it came on just like that. Boom, you know what I mean? And uh, uh, it's a mystery to me. I can't, okay. I can't. So blood clots are formed. If in fact they are blood clots, are they formed from non-activity or how are they formed? Yeah, I mean, people actually get them by uh, just as on a, on a single airplane flight, people can get them. You know what I mean? There's people that, that uh, get them from, like, long trips. Uh, some of the race car drivers, they get them. Uh, you got to keep in mind that not only, like, do I spend a lot of time at the computer, but even before that, the job that I had, I drove, like, sometimes, you know, 10, 12 hours a day. I would drive five or six hours to a meeting, have the meeting, and drive five or six hours back home then, you know. And right. so um, there's all of those all of those things that, uh, you know, but that's really what it is, is that, uh, you know, if it's deep vein thrombosis, then, then, then there you go. If I have deep vein thrombosis in the lower leg, then... Um, the chances of the uh, you're at higher risk if they're above the knee uh, mm -hmm. or in the hip area. You're at higher risk of the blood clot breaking free and then going to either your lungs or your heart. Uh, and um, but when they're in the lower legs, you're at less risk for that to happen. Um, then basically, you know, like I said, uh, when it's been quite a long while since it flared up like that and so I'm thinking you know uh, I don't know I don't really know what to do with but all I know is that um, it is what it is and I just thought the timing was kind of funny that you know I saw that big puffed up leg of poor Mary Margaret I'm like oh my god no what kidding is? yeah that I was, know that looks like a Frankenstein oh my god and uh like that's that's freaking unnecessary right there, man. <laughs> He's like, you don't go looking for the knee is pretty easy to find, buddy. You don't start at the hip and work your way down, okay? Right. <laughs> like holy crap like I have a hard time believing that they needed to get that carried away. Like seriously, that's like what from her mid 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 thigh, uh, mid calf up to the freaking upper part of her thigh. Right, totally. I know. That's like, oh my god! I'm like, I was well, like, you're sending me a picture of your freaking leg, aren't you? And like when I saw this private message with a picture, and so I'm like, truly, I'm like going like this, and I'm like. Oh, you did do it. Damn you, Mary Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, uh, like, I don't do good with that. And so, um, <laughs> she, said, she said, well, it's hurting a lot, and probably because of the rain, I said, well, then let there be sun, you know, let's make it be sunny. Then. And so, um, <clears throat> But, you know, I, I guess it can, then now they better, I said, and they better fucking not let their get, pardon my F word, not let their get infection. That's a big area to worry about when sitting in a freaking hospital. No kidding. kidding. No kidding. I'm like, well, they better not let that get infected. Mm -hmm. I don't think she care about her scars. She wants to just be able to walk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I put on her Facebook page, uh, somebody said something about, like, the, the, they have to give her a hinge or something. I go, see, I always knew she was unhinged. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, anyway, um, hopefully, hopefully every day gets better for her now and, and that they didn't mess nothing up and off she goes, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, totally. Know, she's having a time with that, so. I'm sure she would enjoy just, I bet you, like, 
can, it's like not being able to see for years and then all of a sudden you can see you don't want to probably sit at home looking at the same walls you've been looking at or whatever you know you want to go see everything there is to see them so she might hopefully she'll want to get out walking all the time walk 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 i'm going to go walking why because i can right <laughs> so, yeah i hope so too i hope so too i mean mary margaret is the fucking bomb when it comes to angel status you know what i mean like she's just awesome you know she's very awesome mhm awesome awesome mhm so anyway um i guess we'll, we'll keep but when are they letting her out of there is it a day by day thing um i think she said christy is this true that she said like two days or something or or tomorrow but she i think she's going to be going to a rehab center you know what i mean not like just going home i think she's going to a rehab center which would be good you know um cuz she's got to learn to use that leg again and stuff you know what i mean i'm not sure yeah not sure yeah yeah so <laughs> You're talking about okay. Let me let me finish the recording. So thank you, all the archive listeners. Sorry that we've been gone so long. It's just been one crazy thing after another, like thrown together with a few expected empty nights. And uh, so <clears throat> thank you very much. We're uh, let's see what is going on here. Um, oh, we're off tomorrow. Nick is here Tuesday. Um, and so, uh, and Nick was, <laughs> Nick wrote me last week, he's like, oh, I got mixed up on Fox Tuesday, I'm like, well, I'm sorry, Nick, you know what I mean, and if we would have all known, maybe we could have had a show, but, uh, so Nick, Nick said, he, now I will break both of his legs, let them heal, and break them again, <laughs> you know what I mean, and, uh, <laughs> anyway, archive listeners, thank you very much, we're going to wind up here now and we'll see you back next time.